promised uh, uh, I don't know if you guys are taking notes so far but then anyways moving on now uh, the question uh, question the section B in fact looks uh, more on system technology so it needs you to understand uh, more of the computer itself you know on a hardware level okay so I need to look at I need to okay let me let me do these things in a different approach let me go to word let's let's write some notes okay um okay we have our uh, computers right <laughs> uh, with computers we have uh, two types of computers we have multi-purpose computers okay and then we have dedicated computers okay multi-purpose computers have a well basically the argument is on the word multi which means they have more than one function okay for instance uh, the laptop okay or the desktop computer or your cell phones you can do quite a, a large number of things with them okay so that those are fairly uh, examples of multi-purpose computers then we have dedicated computers well they are dedicated for a specific task and that's the only task they can do for instance um, the telemachine the, the atm the automated teller machine well all it can do is complete transactions for you and that's it you cannot uh, go to an atm and play games or or call your friends on it you very much can't uh, do that because they are dedicated for that specific task and that's very much it so those are the two kinds of computers we have now let's look at a desktop slash laptop now these two things are personal types of computers okay so these things that we can use these thing these two computers for normal purposes normal things we do on everyday basis like typing documents and sending emails and stuff now these are th these kind of functions are what we call general purposes uh, okay so these are general purposes you know things you generally do okay now these kind of computers they have multiple components as I, i'm sure i've said this before they have certain components okay so they have a mouse okay if it's a desktop it has a mouse if it's a laptop it has a touchpad okay and the touchpad is basically that's a uh, square thing or a rectangular thing that you'd basically be moving your 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 finger around just to move the cursor on your on your screen okay now if it's a desktop it's gonna have a keyboard and if it's a laptop it's going to be a keyboard but then it's going to be an embedded one meaning it's built into it okay if it's a laptop it will be an embedded keyboard okay now they also have uh if it's a desktop it will have a monitor and then if it's a laptop it will have a monitor but it's an embedded but it's not just no uh monitor anymore it's now an embedded screen okay and then uh we have uh, a computer box so we have the computer box for a desktop but then now for laptops it's now it's just all built in okay so just notice that everything is just embedded for all of this even the touchpad is embedded so you just have this big box and it has all these things together so as i've said before it's basically convergence okay now let's look at the internal structure of a general purpose computer so let's look at the internal the internal structure okay now an internal structure basically uh let's look at the information processing cycle let's look at the processing part of that computer so it, with a desktop um, in the computer box it uh there are certain things in it you know certain components so we have input process and output okay you input certain data like uh, moving your mouse okay 
now just by moving your mouse there's a, there's a, an entire process that just happened okay you've input something there's a process that happened and this happens at the cpu okay now that's where all processes happen at the cpu okay now let's talk about the cpu a bit cpu stands for central processing unit okay now cpus have certain units of measurement okay cpu cpus have speed depending on how you know they have uh, certain speeds like how they react to you you're giving it input and all the way till it gives you an output an output that entire process has a, a certain speed it happens at and um it, that speed can be measured you know and it is measured in gigahertz okay it is measured in gigahertz all right now cpus they have certain names there are two types of uh cpus we have we have CPUs that are developed by Intel, and then we have CPUs that are developed by AMD. Okay, so these are the two manufacturers that we have that uh, manufacture CPUs, Intel and AMD. Okay, now we let's talk a, a bit about Intel. Okay, so now Intel, it's a company that produces uh, these processors. Okay, so they have certain processors. You know, uh, they have these processors they usually have the word core to it okay so it's core something core something core something so they can have core um core i2 or they can have a uh, core i3 okay or they can have you know core i4 you know they can have core i4 okay now computers can have uh, multiple processors as well okay a computer can have two processors can have three processors can have four processors you know i've, I've seen up to four i don't know if they if they can get, go all the way to five but um now let's start from uh two okay for one processor of course it will just be called a uh, core i2 10 gigahertz processor or something like that okay don't have exactly have a fancy name but then when we have a a computer with two um, uh, processors that would now be called a dual core dual means two okay now let me just add that on there so dual means two okay core remember core we're talking about cpus okay so dual core so we're talking about two processors okay and then it can also have three and i'm sure you can see three is going three is going to be a tricore you know something like that so we're looking at three okay they can also have a four so that's going to be a um, quad 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 something something okay so basically something core something core something core and then there's an i and it's measured in gigahertz just now they're talking about the cpu okay so it processes the uh, it there now that's within the box of the computer now it also the computer itself it also has other components okay such as the system fan now i need you to imagine this on your head you have a farm and um in your farm people are you know harvesting crops and you know they're working under the hot sun now if you want them to you know keep working and not complain a lot you know you need to cool them off you can give them water or you can put them under a fan you can give them water or you can put you can uh, add a fan to the farm i don't know how you would do that but that's one way now this is it the this there's uh in fact let's not call this a system fan because not all computers will have a system fan there are some cases where a computer can have a water instead of a system fan or a certain type of liquid that it can use to cool itself off so let's not say a computer has a system fan a system fan let's say it has a cooling system in fact in, in say instead okay so for a cooling system it can have a, a certain fluid okay or it can have a system fan 
now this fluid basically it works just like a refrigerator basically it uh, it becomes cold in the inside and then it's going to take grab all the heat from the inside and take it outside and then it's gonna circle back in grab the heat take it out circle back in grab the heat take it out so that's a way of cooling it just the very same way uh, a refrigerator works okay and then a fan i'm sure you can you can very much imagine how that works now these things that are cooling the system you know things like the processors they need cooling off as much as they're working because cpus have resistance as well as you pass current through them they're going to like heat up and stuff so you need to cool them off so they can keep on working you know you gotta keep those for those uh laborers working you know so that's two ways okay so that's a system fan okay um that's very much it so um we we said it uh a computers also have a, a screen right or a monitor mm -hmm. okay now these things a screen number one when you're looking over at mine here it has this thing you know it has a certain size you know a certain display size now the internal display size of this thing is called a screen resolution okay now there's a screen resolution then there's an aspect ratio okay and there's a couple of other things now the screen resolution now i need to explain a couple of things here um let me go over to the desktop here when you're looking at screen resolution which will be looking at the size of the screen okay um so in some cases you can see here i have a, a number of icons being able to display here if i uh, were to put this os as it is in another computer with a smaller screen you will find that it won't display all these um uh all these icons as is you'll find that it can maybe display like three of them that will be a very small screen so that means that the computer that i'll be using then will have a very uh, small screen uh, resolution so screen resolutions they'll appear um in in this type of way screen resolutions they'll have they'll appear in two things it's it's like a like a multiple of some sort you can have like 130 by 400 so that's an example of a a um a screen resolution okay and then an aspect ratio is basically going to be like it's basically a ratio 14 is to 2 okay for every 14 uh pixels there's gonna be two rows of of those okay that's basically that okay uh what else did i miss then let me go over to the question here and see oh yes let's talk uh let's talk about the ram okay so they are they, there's there's uh there are storage types okay with the computer there's a storage okay the storage and memory now let's 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 debate about these two okay these are uh, two types of memory uh replaceable memory and uh volatile memory when we're talking about vol volatile we're talking about something that is uh, unstable you know it can go up it can go down okay when i'm talking about a uh, volatile uh memory i'm talking about something that you know moves a lot now next time for a cat learner when you hear something about volatile memory think of ram okay now what's what you need to know about ram is it comes as a chip you know it's like a square chip with these uh teeth uh, dangling on it today okay so now ram when a computer is running uh, i remember telling you about uh cacheing or something like that they are these files that it's going to leave behind okay that's basically telling it or what is it doing it's like you know you're completing a math a mathematic uh, calculation you need to like write down what you've been doing the whole time so you can trace back and keep going you know keep track of everything so the computer keeps track via the ram okay so yeah i'm sure in your mind you can actually tell that if 
computer has less RAM than it will process slow, meaning it has, it's like you being given a piece of paper to solve a very big equation. You will, you will take a long time with it because you don't have much uh, space to work with. But if they give you an entire board or something, you would uh, do it quicker. You do it like quicker in a quicker period of time. Okay. Um, so they that's they have you know certain speeds you know now what's now the thing about ram is um it's 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 volatile so the moment you switch off your computer it will erase it okay and ram chips will only work if they are heated okay so basically the computer is going to like rise in temperature and the ram is going to be working so if the ram cools off if the ram cools off then it erases everything you see that's basically how it works now ram is uh, measured in you know basically like any other data measurements like uh, in megabytes or in you know megabytes for those old uh, pcs and in gigabytes for modern uh, pcs and uh, cell phones as well okay and then we have storage okay okay now one more thing no let's leave that now storage we're talking about hard drives okay hard drives and hard disks okay now when we're looking at storage we have two types okay we have a we have uh, two things you need to know hdds okay and ssd okay hdd is hard drive disk and ssd is solid state disk okay hard drive disk solid state disk hard drive disk are the old ones now these things were very thick you know they had like a very very big uh, size you know now, when I'm talking about size, I'm talking about the size of the thing, not the capacity, you know, and they were like huge in size, okay? So, these were more uh, useful in in um, uh, desktops, okay? And then SSDs are now, you know, commonly used in these laptops. They are very small in space. Okay, now look, in SDDs, these things worked with, if you open a, a, a hard drive disk, you would find a, a a disk with a magnetic uh, with a mag uh, a magnetic uh, strip there and all of that. So basically, how it worked is for you to write data into this uh, hard drive disk, you basically will be writing it on this disk. So this thing, this disk will, would like rotate, okay, while a laser would write data into it, okay. And then there was, you know, something that reads it. It could read uh, data off it. So it would burn uh, data into it. And then if it comes to erasing it, it will burn it off it. Okay. Now the fact that it spins around made it um, not to last longer. Okay. It wouldn't last that long. Okay. The fact that it had uh, moving parts, it wouldn't last that long. Now the solid state disk, it uses laser, but now it uses binary. You know, which is basically a series of zeros and ones. You know, zero one 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 zero one 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 one. So instead of uh, having this disk spinning, it had a the SS, uh, SSD just has a magnetic strip that has these binaries on it, and all the laser does is basically read this. Okay. So just by me saying that, I'm sure you can find the advantages and disadvantages and etc and etc okay so those are the storages and um let's go over to okay we're still talking about the computer okay now let's talk about networking okay now when we're looking at uh, networking a computer has uh, something called the nic network interface uh, controller okay this is a network interface controller this is like an extra chip added to the computer to give it uh, extendable capabilities let's say um, for instance you have a desktop computer 
and it has no um it has it does not have the capability of connecting to a wi-fi network within that area that means it does not have a wi-fi radio okay or if in layman's term it does not have an antenna okay an antenna is basically like that big thing you know that it it has to pick up uh, certain frequencies and signals within that range okay um so you would have a, you would like go to a hardware store and buy an nic that has that has a a wi-fi radio and you would like chip it onto the motherboard of the computer and just by doing that you will give it um, capabilities of connecting to wi-fi service okay now when we're looking at um networking as well let's so much talk about wired and wireless networks wired well think of cables wireless don't think of cables okay wired cables we when we're talking about wired okay i'm gonna give you a couple of examples when it comes to wired we have types of cables things like fiber uh fiber optics fiber optic cables and you can think of copper cables and and etc okay when you're looking at wireless that's when we're now looking at types of wireless networks for instance we have uh bluetooth okay we have uh, bluetooth we have wi uh, Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi is also known as 802.11. Okay, that's another name for Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, we also have um, N uh, NF NFC. Okay, and etc. Okay, these are the kinds. Okay, Bluetooth. I'm sure you know Wi-Fi or it. 802.11 you know nfc is basically the ones that we use to to share files okay that's basically them there are there are other types there are other types of course but this is basically them now wired you know you have cables everywhere you know they're dangling they're tangling and all of those stuff so you can see that um these do not give you uh maneuverability exactly you cannot exactly maneuver with your devices that are part of that network they do not move around so if you have a laptop that has a, a network cable going into the pc you cannot exactly move around with the laptop okay but if it's connected to a 802.11 network then you can actually move the laptop around and still remain connected to the network now just by me explaining this um you can tell the advantages and disadvantages but i feel i should give you a more practical uh, representation uh, over here i have a program called the cisco packet tracer uh, now i use these in my in my studies uh, in studying network administration and all of those stuff so what the packet tracer does is is ba it basically simulates uh, certain networks you know in 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 reality okay now if you if you want to try um try learning a uh, network administration you can you can feel free to do that um good luck though it's 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 fairly easy it's fairly easy okay okay i don't think i need i need these this powerpoint okay now here's the packet tracer now um there's a physical and there's a logical you know presentations so you see in a network you need certain things you know you can have a pc you know you can have a pc you can have uh, you know um, you can have a server you can have uh, let, let's just uh, say you can okay let's have a server okay now if you have a wired network okay if you had a wired network basically you'd have a cable running through okay basically i can have like a copper cable running from this you know from a certain part of this one okay okay i can't connect to that cable let's say i can take it to the first ethernet cable to the server of the first row now look at this you this this is a wired network if you look at it 
okay now that's a wired network you can have a wireless network as well now a wireless network you'd have a device connecting to something else uh, like yeah i can have in a wireless network um so in a wireless network we would have we wouldn't be having these you know so if you had a wireless network you know from this uh cisco thing okay let me let me try and form a wireless network for you you know let's say we have uh wireless networks we also form them with uh cell towers oh no we do not we cannot add an internet battery there no 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 but anyways that's fine yes please okay i want something more practical um okay these are switches and hubs uh let me okay we have a uh, uh, security appliance there we have dsl modems apparently if for those who didn't know dsl stands for digital subscriber line they may ask you that okay now this is something i wanted to talk about cell towers okay now cell towers you know with your phone though your phone catches signal you know to the nearest cell tower now what's happening is that it's actually forming a network with it okay that's basically what's happening it's going to form a mini network with it and the type of network that it will be is uh, okay we also have home routers these are wireless you see they do not need a, a certain cable to connect to their uh to to the members of that network they don't need uh, a cable going through you see okay so that is that um yeah uh what else did i miss let's see before we go to these uh, that's very much it okay now let's talk about um the hardcore technology stuff so we're gonna talk about uh 3d printing okay so what 3d printing is is basically you printing a three-dimensional object now normal printers they would print a two-dimensional um they'll, they'll print in two dimensions basically a, a document you know you 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 take it you, you you put in text and they print it in a in a page you see it's just two dimensions you know it's it's flat you know on the paper but now with three dimensions you can actually with 3d printing you can have a 3d printer and a a document now normal printers will take like word documents pictures pdfs and they'll print those but now a 3d printer will have to take a cad file a cad file is basically the three-dimensional file okay now um i i, I love um uh practical objects but I, I i wish i had those but basically you would create a a um a, a three-dimensional file you know a cad file as they call it uh, which is basically like a 3d representation of what you wanted to print then you would uh take that cad file that you create and you would send it off to the 3d printer and it will create these moldings which will be exactly the same as the um, the ones that the one that you 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 know created using the 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 CAD software okay so that's basically it you know now 3d printers are extremely expensive to buy and maintain as well uh but if we look at the real world 3d printers are wonderful i mean you can print bones apparently you can print bo uh, pro uh bones uh prosthetic arms and etc things like that so you can see that they they are very much useful you know in the practical world um and that's very much uh one thing they'll talk about they can also talk about drones mm. i'm sure you know what drones are you know it's those many things that fly around and stuff you'd control them with a a, a computer or a remote control or some of them they have um ai which is artificial intelligence which means they can actually be able to 
um, a reason on their own on where to go and what to do in certain uh, situations for instance if it's going to be flying straight and there's a wall there it can use infrared sensors to actually detect that there's a wall and then with its own code that's been built into it it can know that it has to maneuver and go around it you see that's basically what artificial intelligence would be with the drone okay and that's very much it okay